And when you ask the Justice Department, why is it that you can't do this? Why can't you enforce the laws on the books? They will tell you every single time they don't have the resources. That's the mantra that they chant. Yet somehow, some way, they were able to find the resources to send agents down to Mexico to find a guy who had been smuggling drugs into the United States. They found him. They gave him amnesty for smuggling drugs into the United States so that he would come back and testify against two agents, agents who I believe were simply doing their job. Now, maybe if the agents did something wrong, if they did not re make the reports out, didn't file the paperwork, there is some sort of administrative punishment that could be meted out that would be appropriate. But I don't think five to 20 years in the slammer really fits the definition of appropriate penalty. My name is Ted Poe, a member of Congress from Texas. And before coming to Congress, I spent all my years in the criminal justice system, first as a prosecutor and then as a judge. And as a prosecutor, I tried people who harmed cops, and I tried police officers that harmed citizens. And as, as a judge, I heard both of those types of cases. And I've reviewed this particular case, and it seems like the United States Justice Department's on the wrong side. It appears they're working for the government of Mexico instead of the government of the American people. Two border agents, the first responders for our border, for those drug cartels, those humans, those people who smuggled drugs and that cancer into the United States, capture one of those individuals. He's in a fight with our border agents. He is shot. And what happens? Our government prosecutes the border agents for doing their job. It seems to me the prosecutor is a renegade. It just wants a pelt on her belt to show that she can actually prosecute someone in law enforcement. She prosecuted the wrong person. And this needs to be cleared up as soon as possible because we need to do everything we can to stop illegal aliens from coming into this country. And if we uh, can encourage our Border Patrol agents to do their jobs, then we can slow down the flow of illegal aliens. And I want to see a very thorough and a very objective study done of this and for all the facts to come clear. Thank you very much. And as I said, it's clear to me that a carrier and possessor of a huge amount of poundage of marijuana is a law violator. Illegal immigrants should not be coddled. Coddling illegal aliens will only encourage more illegal entry into this country. I want to thank Congressman Jones and all those who have assisted in this meeting this morning, and I hope our being here will uh, uh, lead to a much more complete investigation of the matter. Now, it also concerns me to hear that uh, the, this drug dealer uh, is, is apparently is, uh, at least he's been arrested a couple of times for dealing drugs or bringing drugs into this country, is now suing us apparently for $5 million, another black mark against our justice system. This has got to be brought to light. The only way to completely disinfect anything is to get good sunshine on it. That's what we need to require. That's what I hope that we will produce. And I want to be part of that. People protecting us need to know that we will protect them also when they just do their job. So I thank you for your interest. I thank you for helping us get to the bottom of it. But when it, you apply the smell test, as I was taught in law school, this whole thing stinks and it needs to be lanced and cleaned up and get this infection out where it can heal. Thank you. I have spoken to an assistant attorney general, Will Marcella. I was on a conference call with Andy Ramirez, who will be speaking to you shortly. We asked him to please look into this case. Something is not right. And you've heard from two or three judges prior to me speaking who said that there's, there's an odor with this whole situation. I have also yesterday, day before, spoke to Paul McNulty, who I think is the second to uh, the attorney, Gonzalez, U.S. attorney. I'm asking them to look into it. I've had two phone calls with the White House, two separate people asking them to please look into this case. It will be absolutely unacceptable. It will absolutely be a sin. It will be a crime if these two agents go to jail. So I hope and pray, and I want to thank all the groups that are helping us nationally. And let me show you, 
that FAIR has already collected thousands of petitions to the President of the United States to ask him to get involved in this injustice and help us to correct this injustice. Thank you, Congressman, and all the members of Congress who have rallied behind these two heroes to support them. A crime was committed in Fabens, Texas on February the 17th of 2005. It was not committed by the two Border Patrol agents. It was committed by a drug smuggler who smuggled in 743 pounds of marijuana, assaulted a federal agent, and threatened both of those federal agents with bodily harm by pointing a weapon at them. They fired at this drug smuggler in self-defense. And now here we are, some 18 months later, these agents have been prosecuted and convicted by our government for doing their job. Uh, what has happened here uh, to these two Border Patrol agents, uh, Jose, uh, cor correction, Ignacio Ramos and Jose Alonzo Campion, what has happened to these two Border Patrol agents could happen to each and every law enforcement agency uh, in the United States. Every day we go to fight against drug smugglers, against uh, uh, aliens coming across the border that are that are uh, infiltrating the border on a daily basis. The, uh, the Border Patrol agents, sheriff's deputies, and other law enforcement agencies along the southwest border put their lives on the line daily to fight these types of issues. The border has become a war zone, and if, if the, the public doesn't realize that, they need to come down and see the, the daily activities of those border patrolmen that are working daily to fight the, the war against drug and the, the war against drugs and the war against uh, terrorism on the border. I'll give you two examples from the trial itself. The dope smuggler, uh, Mr. Aldredi Davila, was given immunity, but then violated the terms of his immunity agreement and refused to provide information repeatedly throughout the trial. Well, when that took place, the Department of Justice did not have him ordered taken into custody immediately. No, they snuck him out the back door of the federal courthouse in El Paso and took him back to Mexico instead of enforcing it. And at the time, he was under sealed indictment for the 1,000 pounds of marijuana that he attempted to bring in and got caught last October from. So this wasn't a single incident. Clearly, a case is made that the court needs to be investigated, the Department of Justice needs to be investigated, and the Department of Homeland Security. The suspect was fleeing from the scene. As he was fleeing, he turned over his left shoulder with his left arm, pointed a weapon at the agents. So they were justified in shooting at the man. And that's borne out by the testimony of the medical examiner who removed the bullet fragment from the drug smuggler, that it went in through his left buttock, lodged in his right buttock, consistent with someone who is running and turns their whole body, not just turns their head to glance over and see what's happening behind them. I credit the testimony of the two agents and the physical corroborating testimony that the drug smuggler had his body turned pointing a weapon at those agents. There's no other plausible thing that the drug smuggler could have been doing. He wouldn't be pointing a pen. He wouldn't be pointing a lighter. He wouldn't be pointing, saying, hey, if you're going to follow me, look out for that cactus bush behind me. He was pointing a weapon at the agents. They were fully justified. Border Patrol agents, as well as all other law enforcement agents, are authorized to defend themselves in the line of duty. It is our hope that we continue to push the White House and the U.S. Attorney to look into this matter and let's see if there's a wrong, let's correct the wrong and let's save two men who deserve to be innocent and not be convicted of a issue that should never have been brought to trial anyway. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We got to stay on top of this. Thank you. Thank you.